Hello and welcome back to the Moshik's Mainframe channel. This is Moshik's. And today we're going to be having some fun playing with Assembler again and writing some uh, or one particular Assembler program. I've received quite a few videos, uh, comments from, uh, from uh, viewers of this channel saying that they enjoy watching me develop uh, or write software in, in Assembler and other programming languages because even if not everybody necessarily understands every line that's going on on the screen. Overall, they think they're learning something. And um, and I fully agree. I have the same experience. I, for instance, I watch the channel of Biscuit and I put in a, a link to his channel below in the description below this video. And he develops a very interesting C++ software and a very, very uh, gifted uh, programmer and uh, especially when it comes to Boolean logic, uh, I'm always surprised how fast he grasps those concepts. And even though I'm a, not, not really a very good C++ programmer, I learn something. Uh, even if I don't understand everything he's doing, every line by line, I learn something from watching his uh, videos. And so, uh, and I understand why people say that they learn something watching my YouTube video. So let's go. Today I thought um, I'll write a new version of the very um, very well known IFBR14 utility. If you remember um, our oops, uh, our uh, one of my videos from uh, just a, about a week ago M5, M49 where I show an assembler program that launches a job through the internal reader. And we have some examples of that here. Uh, sport job ID descending. So then it will be, uh, I guess, this one. So in this program, you'll see that I uh, issue a, here it is, I issue a a job from inside an assembly program and the job really does nothing other than launch a little utility called IFBR14. Now IFBR14 has been around I want to say at least 45 to 50 years in the IBM mainframe world. Um, it has quite an interesting past. IFBR14 uh, all it does is branches to register 14. That's what B R14 stands for branch register 14, which in the mainframe convention, uh, IBM mainframe convention means branch back to whence you came from, uh, because register 14 uh, has the address of the next instruction of the caller, and and as such, if uh, when, if you called as a program and you branch to uh, register 14, you will return exactly to the caller of your program, and that utility is used millions or probably billions of time every day in mainframes all around the world when you want to um, do some stuff in JCL but you don't necessarily have a program that you want to execute like allocating new data sets, removing data sets, um, uh, printing stuff maybe to the console or launching a new job as we've seen that in this case uh, anytime you have to do something in JCL uh, but you don't want to actually run a real program, you would issue IFBR14. Now, IFBR14 has an interesting pact, uh, past because the first few releases of IFBR14, even though it's a very simple program, you get called, you branch back to register 14, actually contain the bugs, uh, contain the bug. So in, in, in those first seven, eight lines of code, um, and it's really all just eight or nine lines of code in, in total, uh, the IBM developers of the operating system, because this is an operating system utility, managed to sneak in a bug, <laughs> and uh, and so today we're gonna. It's fixed now. It's bug free, and I think we can say that for an eight or nine line program, it's bug free because just looking at the code, you know it's bug free. But we're gonna write our own version of IFBR14 and see um, what it takes to write such a small little utility, but which is very very important in the daily operations of data centers all around the world. I bet you that anytime you get a phone bill, anytime you get a credit card bill, anytime you dial a phone number, or anytime uh, you dr drive through a toll booth on the highway, somewhere in there, 
there is an IFBR 14. Isn't that amazing? So let's go and write our own IFBR 14. Um, what I want to do is I want to start with um, a program that we wrote last week uh, called Assembler Submit. Oops. Uh, actually, that's wrong. Tabs. ASM Submit. And we can take all of this. Oh, let's make it all of it. And create a new program. And we're going to call this Moshix 14. Um, how are we going to call this utility? Moshix. Mosh BR14. Mosh BR14. That's going to be the name of my new utility. Okay. Um, all right. So and this utility is not actually going to print anything. So we can delete all of this. It's also not going to close any output files because it doesn't have any output files. Um, it's also not going to open any output files because it doesn't have any output files. And you can see how much thinner the program has already become. Um, and I'm operating here on ZOS, but this would be exactly the same. I mean, line for line, exactly the same. On, uh, on MBS 3.8 with one exception. Um, in MBS 3.8, uh, the FX assembly deck can only have eight character uh, uh, a label. So let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, this is exactly eight, so it still fits in. So this would actually run one for one in uh, MBS 3.8, and we could easily make, uh, you know, prove this in, uh, in uh, by copying this code later once we got this running. So um, what we do here is we establish, we say uh, we start here. We have a save area for the register we get when we come in. One thing to understand in a in a, in assembler is that. Even though we have a massive mainframe that can cost $30 million and has um, dozens of CPUs, there's only one set of registers and everybody shares those registers. So uh, there needs to be a convention that if a particular program is running and is, mod is, is modifying those registers, which is hardware, it's a hardware feature on the processor. Uh, and then it calls another another program, which happens millions of times every second. That program needs to save the registers of the caller, which is what we're doing here, right? And then um, in the save area, which is 18 full words, a full word is 32 uh, bits, uh, 32 bytes. And so, um, and then when it returns, it needs to re-establish the registers as they were before the program was called and then and then branch back to the caller by um, by uh, returning uh, returning to the caller and so um, and this is what we're doing here and so we get called we save the registers in this save area and then we use a base register for all addressability because the architecture of the of the mainframe is that all um, addressing is done by base and displacement. The base has to be one of the 16 registers and so uh, by convention there's certain registers we don't use uh, but R12 is an often used register for that which means that uh, with this code we can address 4096 bytes of assembler code. If we want to go beyond that we need to use another register because of the size of the register and um, and so then um, what we do here, return, you can say here return, and we return. Now let's have a little twist on our, um, on our own version of IFBR14, which is the following, before we return, 
we issue a WTO, which is right to operator. Um, uh, I have to go look up if this is the exact way to code it. I haven't used the WTO in a long time, but that's easy to do. Okay. Um, yeah, we can also just write it like this. There is a, there is a routing code that you can use so that you know which uh, which uh, console you're writing to. So I guess we we'll just leave it like that to make it easy for everybody to follow. Um, one operator of invocation. Okay, um, and so this is all there really is to it. Uh, we still need an end here, and that's about it. Um, but we need the register, otherwise we're gonna have the same problem we had in the previous video, the register equates. Um, assembler on its own only knows a sem uh, register numbers, this numbers here. And if you want to use a, a more readable version like register 15, register 14 instead of just 14, we need to create these equates here, which I'm going to put in here. Okay, so this is done. Um, I don't really like this. Um, I need my code to look beautiful where I can't sleep at night. Uh, call it a call it a, a mental defect, but this is how I am. Um, we can also do away with the literal uh, pool because we don't have any literals, but it doesn't uh, disturb to have it there. And so we say here, we say uh, register equates and end of source. Okay, this is not the end of the program here. The end of the program is actually here. So the logical end of the program is in this line. This is just the end of the source. This is what the, the, the assembler needs. But in the binary, we'll see that the last instruction of the program is actually going to be here. So um, I think this works. Um, let's save it and let's start. Um, the submit program that I have and let's go in here and call it mosh PR14 and this should work out of the box. Call this R so we can identify it in the spoon. Why don't we launch this and see what happens? Job 928. Oh, return code 8. That's not good. Um, okay. This always surprises. That's why you think that's a real tight, a real tiny little piece of code and it should go without any, any assembly errors, but there you go, there's assembly errors. Uh, where is the problem? There is no problem, as far as I can see. Yeah, do you see here the message to the console? I don't have access to the console of this mainframe because if you remember, uh, Preston, a very nice young one, uh, here in the US has granted me access to his COS system and he has control of the of the console but this is a message that's been displayed on the console you can see it here so the program worked there's still some something wrong with it we're going to find out what it is so let's look at the code here uh, as, a, as if you remember I told you this was going to be the last line of the code and here of course it is um, so uh, everything else is not really part of the code below it, as you can see here. 
there's no code generated here for this section. So this all looks good. Um, Unreferenced symbols defined in CSECT. Motion BR14. It's complaining about unreferenced symbols defined in CSECT. Let's see if we can find what it is. Statements flagged 45. this. Let's try it and uh, let's save it. Let's open it again. Let's see what is the matter here. Swap test. So Obviously, there's one record less here because we have one statement less in the source code, uh, which is, does not affect the created program. That's all, it's only one, one line less and not two lines less. Um, but let's see here, what is the problem? Bush BR14. Oh, it, okay, it complains that all this have never been referenced. So we could just um, do without all of this. Okay, I understand what, what, what it's complaining about. This is a very nice assembler. It uh, understands a lot of things. And so it said, what it's telling us is that uh, this is never referenced and this is never referenced. We could do just basically without this. And, and then um, we're not referencing any of this uh, register equates. And that's only like, like 13 we're never referencing, obviously. Uh, actually 13 we are referencing, but 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, um, et cetera, we're not referencing. And that's why it's complaining. Uh, we have, it tells, it's telling us we have unnecessary code in there. But um, I don't actually, well, I want to try to get a clean assembly. So let's see which one we're not using. I think uh, we're using this. 14, 12 we're using. One we're not using. Two we're not using. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten we're not using. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And we are using. And R15 we're not using. So if I'm correct, we use 14, 12, we have R13, we have uh, 14, we have, uh, we could technically also write here R14. And say, say the same thing here. Okay, save registers and then this needs to be corrected. Okay, so let's see if we get this this time to compile correctly. 9.30, swap 4. Oh, this time it's even worse. Oh no. What is it complaining about? We'll find it very soon. Invalid first open. Oh, because in the safe because this is a macro, oh, okay, I know what it is. So we need to remove here the R. What well, stupid of me, I should have known that. It's been a while since I used these macros. Um, I have my own uh, macros for the registers establishment and, and you know the chain area and uh, quitting at the end. And that's why. Um, okay. And swap three, 
submit 931 and it comes back with swap uh, with uh, error code 8 swap 4 let's see what it was so this still uh, was executed just right but let's see what it is it's complaining about required name missing uh, now it's complaining because we don't have a reference so we need to eliminate this statement uh, let's make this as terse as we can possibly make it and so the assembler is correct we don't technically we don't need this line here uh, and also of course the the comment is is totally wrong okay so swap three submit and swap four still a problem let's go see what it is this time undefined symbol end oh it's complaining about this okay so i think i know what we need to do swap two swap okay. Yeah, we need this. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Okay. Swap one. The comma, because we don't give this a name here. We can still call it Mosh PR14. And let's see here. Swap two. Um, Mm, swap 3, submit, swap 4, okay now we had re yeah, return code 0, so this worked now, we just had, I was missing that comma in the end statement, that's all that was missing, so now we have a uh, very terse code, let's uh, write 4, okay, so we enter, we uh, have the start of the code is here, we save the registers, establish here with, it tells us that we use register 12 as base register and it's reflected from then on for next three statements here. The C here, that's 12 in hexadecimal, which is this register here for addressability. And so then we uh, restore the we established the save area chain, the chain area for the save registers, and then we issue this WTO, which which is a macro, and it generates quite a few code, quite a bit of code after it. So we can actually we can what we can do to show you what this WTO generates is swap one, and we say print gen. The, the print gen, print no gen, gen means expand the macros into the full assembly code and no gen is don't, ex don't expand them in the source code, uh, in the printout. So uh, swap three, I'm going to run this again, uh, job 934, let's see the return code, return code zero, so job one done, swap four, and now if you go look at the code, because I put in print gen, you can see here, oops, there's the pluses. This pluses means it was expanded because I put in, I put, I put in here print gen. And print gen says now it aligns. First of all, it's, it aligns the code. Uh, alignment is still something that's um, uh, important on the mainframe, as almost with any assembler because of the way that RAM is addressed. Uh, RAM is interleaved very often for performance reasons and for, um, and for other reasons. Uh, elect electronic reasons really uh, and so aligning things correctly is very important for machine code uh, when you write in Python and when you write in Java all these things are far far removed from the from the machine code but when you start to get close to machine code as with assembler you need to take care of, uh, of alignment memory alignment and this is what this and then here we have it's uh, it has it's establishing some uh, buffers and then here SVC 35, which is service call, kind of as an interrupt, as a signal in, in Unix. 
I don't know how to call them, there's a name in Windows, uh, SX or something like that, uh, when, you, when you call the operating system services. So this is what it is. Kind of a signal in Unix or interrupt. Uh, we're calling the operating system services and what we're asking it to put this on the console. So it's, so, because this is a complex operation only and privileged operation, only the operating system can do it. And that's why it's invoking SVC35. And, and then return is another macro and it's telling us what it does. We could just write this three instructions ourselves, right? Here we're putting zero into the uh, register 15, which is this part here. So you can see, we're basically, basically putting a zero into register 15, which is used as a return code by the caller of our program to determine the return code. If you remember, we just saw that our assembly went with return code zero, which means the assembler, somewhere at the very end of the assembler code itself, the, the assembler that assembled my assembly program, uh, there is somewhere a line like this. And then branch 14, which is the return to the caller. Um, and, and this is it. So we now have our very own, um, a very own uh, assemb uh, uh, IFBR code. I could now go and put this somewhere um, so that we could use it again and again. So for instance, uh, swap three. What we haven't done here is where do we put this code, right? So we could have now some JCL to put this into a library as object module so that I can keep invoking it again and again as Mosh BR14 or whatever name I want to give it or even just EFBR14 and replace the existing EFBR14 which means that now every time anybody in the system invokes EFBR14 if I do this then it will, it's going to write to the to the console um, and this is about uh, let's see I have installed a monitor here on the system which um, should give me some visibility into the console. Uh, Brett Price is amazing monitor. Let's see if there's a way to see the console here. No, uh, because it's not, uh, this is not running as APF authorized. Um, so I'm not able to see uh, the console. But we actually, it's useful to look at this because we can see that this is using, this system has eight processors. Wow, it's quite a system. And I don't know how much memory it has. And this is version 0 as version 110, I guess. Um, it was IPL with warm IPL on this date at 9.27 a.m. I guess this is Eastern time. It's using GS2 as its uh, primary subsystem, which I already knew, and plenty of other information about the system. So um, that's it. I showed you how to write your own system utilities. It's very easy. Um, let's go look at our code again. Um, nothing special there. Here it is. Oh no, uh, that's not it. Here it is, in its full beauty. Um, uh, this is not really perfect. Okay, and now it looks perfect. So this would be my very private uh, IFBR14 um, operating system utility. And this shows you how to system program on, uh, on ZOS or on MBS 3.8. I hope you had fun watching me. Uh, if you like this video, please press on the thumbs up button. And I urge you to consider subscribing to the main, Moshik's mainframe channel to get notifications of future videos. Thank you for watching this video. Goodbye.